uh, yeah, thanks to the organizers for, for, for giving me the, this opportunity. Uh, so this work was uh, started as a part of my bachelor's thesis while I was at IIC and, uh, and uh, continued, continued for some time. So let's, let's just jump right in. Uh, so basically what we have been doing uh, is comparing predictions made by a few master quantum master equations against each other and against some very basic statistical principles. And in particular, we uh, studied this uh, red field quantum master equation, local in black uh, quantum master equation, and this recently proposed universal in black equation for which the reference is in the footnote. And uh, we mainly looked at things like thermalization and currents in both equilibrium and non-equilibrium setups, right? Uh, so what do I mean by a quantum master equation? Uh, let's sort of have a brief uh, crash course. So uh, typically you, uh, in a system bath setup, you can split the global Hamiltonian into a system uh, a bath and a system bath coupling around a Hamiltonian. And here epsilon will uh, control the strength of the system bar coupling. And what we wish to do is we wish to write the dynamics of the system without having to describe the full system bar uh, Hilbert space. And so uh, you can do the standard Born and Markov approximations where Born consists of expanding uh, the, the interaction out up to epsilon squared in the system bar coupling and Markov uh, assumes that, that, that the bath is uh, a new memory. And you end up with something that looks like this, where you have to, in some sense, trace out the degrees of freedom of the bath. And depending on exactly how you trace them out and what additional approximations you make, you end up with one of uh, multiple possible quantum master equations. Right, so uh, the general setup that we will be looking at uh, here is uh, a system that uh, has multiple sites and each site may be coupled to, uh, coupled to uh, its own bath. And the bath at each site is uh, going to be uh, infinite number of bosonic modes. And the system bath coupling is going to be of this specific form. And it turns out that the bath is going to appear in our master equations via this spectral bath function, which is defined in this particular way. And uh, for, for, for this work, we uh, basically look at a system that consists of a Heisenberg XXZ chain uh, with this uh, sort of commonly seen coupling. And uh, we assume our spectral bath function is, uh, is, is, is linear with exponential cutoff uh, for positive omega. Okay, so. Uh, what do I mean by the red field equation? Well, the red field equation is uh, sort of very well connected to the microscopic uh, setup. And you can derive it by simply doing the Born and Markov approximation and evaluating, evaluating the trace over the reservoir and just substituting the, 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 the operators for your specific system. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's, it has no additional approximation beyond the Born and Markov. Uh, but it's not it, it, it's not guaranteed to preserve uh, positivity, and so you might see some uh, some operators that are not positive, some density operators that are not positive. Uh, but the interesting thing about this equation is that if the imaginary parts of the dissipative uh, dissipative constants that appear here are ignored, then uh, then then you can show that the generalized then you can show that the Gibbs state is going to be a steady state of this equation. Uh, and when we replace these imaginary parts of the dissipative constants, we call that equation the real red field, because obviously only the real parts of the constants are, are kept. Okay, so the local in Blad equation is also uh, fairly commonly used. And uh, there, to derive this one, typically uh, for the purposes of facing out the bath, uh, you assume that the system at each site interacts with only the bath and not the other sites. And uh, once you do these uh, additional transformations, you, you, you end up with an equation that looks like this, 
HLS is a Hermitian lamp shift term, and uh, these gamma is uh, positive real numbers that that, uh, that affect the speed of dissipation. And uh, I mean, as you've probably seen in previous presentations, this equation is uh, has this nice property that it, it it preserves positivity for all initial starting conditions. Uh, so this universal in bad master equation has been recently proposed. Uh, and it's very interesting because it has been shown to be accurate up to the same order as Redfield. And if you can remember, Redfield was the one that had minimal additional assumptions apart from Born and Marco. And uh, to sort of write down this equation for our setup, we first have to write your system bath coupling in as a sum of product of uh, emission system and bath operators. And once that's done, uh, these uh, lamp shift terms and this Lindler operators can be sort of computed using these equations. Uh, so uh, you can think of this G tilde matrix as uh, as the weights that determine uh, uh, as as weights that act on the the x operators that are actually the coupling between the system and bath. And 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 so these equations give you the the the, the Lindler operators and the lamp. Shift. Okay, so now that uh, we have sort of taken a look at the equations that are studied, uh, let me tell you a bit about the general general setup the, that we have we have looked at. So uh, we have this this spin chain uh, which which uh, is coupled to multiple bars. So for simplicity, uh, all the plots that I'll show in this presentation will consist of the uh, n equal to three case. So there are only three spins, and the first and the last. Uh, spins are connected to bars, uh, which may be either in equilibrium or in non-equilibrium. Okay, so uh, the first sort of uh, not very surprising result that that may have been seen before is 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 that uh, the right field. So so in this plot here, we have we have computed the trace distance between. The steady state, as predicted by our quantum master equations, and the, the thermal state of the of the system, and we find that uh, Redfield, uh, universal Lindler, and real Redfield uh, predict a steady state that's very close to the thermal state, whereas local Lindler uh, fails to do so right uh, right from right from the start. Uh, and so we can also plot the magnetization profile, and uh, here we see that. There's pretty good agreement between Redfield, uh, real Redfield, and universal Lindblad, and it agrees with the thermal profile uh, that that you expect to see in equilibrium situations, whereas the local Lindblad profile is is clearly very different. Right. Okay, so uh, now we move on to something that uh, that that showed some uh, more interesting results. So. Uh, there are essentially two ways one can compute currents uh, in, in these setups. So you can compute a bond current between any two locations, uh, any two spins, uh, by computing the expectation value of this operator for each j. And this operator represents sort of the, the spin current uh, flowing through each, each bond. Uh, one can also compute uh, this thing called the boundary current where you evaluate uh, d by dt of the, the magnetization of the system and on the right hand side dip, uh, you you will end up with terms uh, terms representing contributions from each bath and you simply assign the contribution of each bath to be the current from that particular bath right? and for these currents to uh, satisfy the continuity equation and sort of be be meaningful uh, you expect that uh, you expect that the continuity equation is, should be valid, which means that the rate of change of local magnetization should, can be written as uh, the sum of currents going in minus the sum of currents going out. Right. Okay. So now uh, it can be shown quite uh, it's, it's quite straightforward to show that for red field, uh, local in black, uh, and sort of the real red field approaches we have seen uh, that that. Uh, all of those approaches will always obey the continuity equation. And so uh, in the steady state, because the magnetization is not changing, you will obtain 
uh, every single bond current to be equal and these bond currents will be equal to the currency obtained from the boundary boundary calculations. Uh, however, numerically, uh, we find that this is not true for the universal Lindbergh approach and that in the steady state in general for universal Lindblad, the, the bond currents may not be equal to each other. Okay, so because the bond currents are not equal to each other, it's unclear what, what is the current in, in, in these, in, uh, you, when you use this approach. And so we, we will plot all of them uh, in our future plots. Okay, so um, what we find here is that if you, if you compute currents in equilibrium situations, you may actually get a non-zero current uh, from all of our approaches, which is, which is very unphysical. But uh, the important thing to note is that the scaling of this current with epsilon is, is crucial. So we find that for, for the red field approach and for the ULE boundary uh, currents, uh, the, the, the equilibrium current uh, scales as epsilon raised to four. And so up to epsilon squared, uh, the contribution is zero, uh, which is to be expected. Uh, and which is, which is uh, a desirable, desirable uh, phenomenon. Uh, and the epsilon raised to four error can also be attributed to the fact that we used the bond approximation, which is only accurate up to epsilon squared. Uh, whereas uh, we see that for local Lindblad and for universal Lindblad bond current uh, calculations, the the uh, those currents in equilibrium are proportional to epsilon squared, and and that that cannot be explained uh, as an error due to due to the bond approximation. Uh, so now we move on to uh, non-equilibrium driving setups uh, where uh, we find this qualitative difference between between the predictions made by these these uh, equations. So we find that uh, uh, the red field and ULE boundary currents actually agree with each other to a fairly fairly good degree, uh, but but are non-monotonic with respect to G, whereas the local and black currents are, are monotonic and they they uh, that, that's a qualitative difference. Uh, again, we can plot the magnetization profile and and see that see that. Uh, the magnetization profile by all approaches uh, other than local Lindblad agree with each other, while the local Lindblad profile is, is, is clearly different. And finally, uh, what we can now study is because the bond currents at each, each, each location are not the same, uh, one can look at the difference between the bond currents, which is, let's say, the unphysical part of uh, those currents and, and, and investigate its scaling with epsilon and we find that uh, for ULE the bond currents uh, the difference in bond currents actually also scales with epsilon squared and so even this cannot be attributed to to an error due to due to the bond approximation okay uh, so now we would sort of like to have a better understanding of of or maybe a, 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 a analytic uh, in, uh, proof of, of, of the problem with ULE bond currents. And, um, and we sort of are able to, able to provide one. And so I'll just uh, briefly sketch, sketch how we do that, right? So uh, for this, for this uh, analytic calculations, you'll, 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 you'll work with uh, the Heisenberg XX system. And we can sort of transform that into a fermionic system using the jordan Wigner transformation. And then, uh, as long as one is only interested in certain certain uh, expectation values, uh, uh, they can be obtained from the expectation value of the transform system in a fairly easy manner. Okay. So, currents uh, only concern uh, currents uh, only look at uh, uh, operators of this form, and so after we do the transformation, they can be simply obtained by 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 calculating expectation values of operators that look like this. So the idea is to compute the time dynamics of to first transform the system and then to compute the time dynamics of this correlation matrix here. Uh, and so uh, uh, basically after doing the transformation, 
uh, writing down a quantum master equation and then computing the rate of change of the, the, the correlation matrix, we ultimately end up with an equation that looks like this. Uh, and uh, the steady state of equations that look like this can be solved quite easily by, by calling standard numerical packages. And uh, once we have this, we see that, well, for the continuity equation to be valid, uh, one, one would require that uh, cjj dot when j does not equal one or n is actually, uh, again, the difference between currents going in and currents going out. And so uh, if the continuity equation is valid, then qjj should be identically zero uh, when j, is, j represents a spin in the bulk. Uh, so once we have this, one can basically look at the QJJ for various approaches, and we can easily show that while the red field, real red field, and local and black uh, predict the QJJ that is identically zero when J is not equal to one or n. Uh, the, for the ULE setup, uh, QJJ can be shown to be actually uh, greater than or equal to zero, and so so uh, it, uh, and it's not identically zero. And so basically the idea is that ULE bond currents cannot be trusted to give correct results up to even second order Napsala. Uh, right, so basically what we have seen is that uh, uh, Redfield and Universal and Vlad approaches predict sort of the correct expected thermal steady state in equilibrium while local and Vlad does not. And these approaches also predict qualitatively different dependence of current uh, on, on G, which is the inter-site coupling parameter. Uh, we've seen that the universal in that bond currents do not obey the continuity equation. And in fact, the deviation is of the order of epsilon squared. And so the correct way to compute currents using, using universal in that approach is via boundary currents. And uh, we've seen that the unphysical currents that come up via the Redfield and Universal in that boundary currents approach are actually proportional to epsilon four. And so these can be uh, these can be attributed to the to the bond mark of approximation. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you, Devashish, uh, for your presentation. Is there any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, when you do this uh, Jordan Wigner, uh, so you sort of get this Jordan Wigner phases on the terminal sides of the chain, right? Uh, is that yeah. accounted for when you computed the current? Yes. So, uh, uh, sorry. Yes. So, uh, yes, that is accounted. Uh, I mean, uh, still you get the closed equations for the correlators, uh, this, this uh, uh, equation is it? the light long equation. Yes, yes. And, and uh, that only that happens only if like, as, a, as I've written, you, 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 the bars are only coupled to the edge locations. And so the phase factors sort of, uh, they appear in the quantum master equations. But when you, uh, when you compute the dynamics of the correlation matrix, the space factors can be shown to cancel out. Uh, but that that does not hold if you if you attach a bath to a location in the bulk. So 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 the correlation results are only true if they are only attached to the end sites. OK, OK. And uh, uh, can I have one more question? Uh, so uh, I think in Archuk's paper, he shows that uh, local Lindblad also does, uh, fails to uh, predict this uh, bond currents accurately, where uh, you expect uh, systems to have finite bond currents. It predicts like uh, zero bond currents for some bosonic chains. Uh, uh, am I missing something that uh, you are finding that local Lindblad is predicting finite uh, uh, bond currents in this situation? Uh, I'm not sure. So our, our, if you're talking about the 2016 paper, uh, that yes, yes. Wrote, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I think the message of that paper is also that local Lindblad predicts incorrect currents uh, or currents. So uh, I guess the so they also obtain a plot similar to this, where the local Lindblad current in non-equilibrium is sort of a monotonic increase, whereas the red field current is 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 a non-monotonic curve. Uh, but I don't think they looked at equilibrium currents, and so. 
the plot that we see here is is not can cannot be compared with with that paper. Okay, so you have continuity equation still valid for the uh, uh, this uh, local in law, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. And, and that can be shown uh, analytically also. Uh, okay. Slightly, yeah. Very easily. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there any other question? Okay. So uh, since there are uh, no other question, please uh, thank uh, uh, Ashish for his presentation.